I'm posting this in the hopes that somebody might actually remember an... an odd game... or a, um, a ritual, I suppose it'd be more fitting, which was floating around on social media a few years back. Sometime in January of 2012, an obscured Let's Play channel called uh, Wedge FF7 uploaded a video entitled Internet Urban Explorer Episode 1. Caitlin is crying. As I recall, the video consisted of five minutes of poor quality screen cap footage cut with plain Windows Movie Maker text boxes through which Wedge FF7 explained the premise of a rumor which had been doing the rounds at his school. As he talks us through the premise of the ritual he's about to perform, the operator opens Firefox and punches in the web address www.catherineiscrying.com and hits the return key. Immediately, we're confronted by one of those ugly domain squatting pages, the white page with a list of links to buy Viagra pills, various other dubious links. However, as Wedge FF7 explains, this is all a part of the plan. Scrolling to the bottom of the list, the second to last link is a single phrase lacking punctuation and in lower case. I'm lonely. Clicking this launches us to a blank web page with a plain black background, several broken images that are visible, and their file names apparently random jumbles of numbers. Wedge FF7 clicks around the page for a couple of minutes with no luck. At one point, ten seconds before the end of the recording, he coughs, and then realizing his voice is being recorded, laughs awkwardly and mutters, Mike's turned itself on. It's weird. Hello, world. I have no idea who else, if anyone, investigated this rumor way back in 2012. I'm only aware of the origins of Catherine's crying because I was obsessed with the Let's Play community back in the day, and had become one of Wedge FF7's 200 or so subscribers at some point. As it happens, Catherine is Crying was the only episode of his Internet Urban Explorer series. In fact, unless I'm very much mistaken, it was the last video ever uploaded onto his channel and was unlisted or deleted sometime in 2012 or 2015, apparently by Wedge himself. Besides the erasing of the Catherine video, the channel has been completely abandoned since 2012. I've got no idea when and how Catherine is Crying made this transition from cringe-inducing school kids video, which probably never exceeded a couple thousand views, to becoming a minor social media craze. But late 2014, a rash of Catherine is Crying reaction videos uploaded to the micromedia site Vine. In case you're unfamiliar, Vine was a short-lived video sharing site which limited the user to six-second clips. Apparently. Media moguls assumed millennials have the attention span of goldfish or something. Anyway, vines began to appear of people visiting Catherine's crying, and then whispering into their microphones. Kitty cat, come out and play. Now, this is where things get interesting. It's impossible to tell how many of these videos were fakes, but very often, enunciating that phrase would elicit an immediate highly unsettling response. Lights would dim or flicker, speakers would emit sudden squawks of bass, phones would buzz or ping as though receiving a text, but the wide-eyed Vinesters would lift the devices to show no new messages. Little things, stupid things, but enough to lift the hairs on your neck. The Catherine is crying craze, restricted to a couple dozen videos total, apparently came to a head in early 2015, when a video circulated various Facebook groups titled simply, Do Not Play With Catherine Is Crying. This you might still be able to find if you dig through Facebook enough. Clicking it reveals an unsteady camera phone footage. The cameraman, a husky-voiced African-American gentleman, explains in a shaky tone that his stupid-ass kid has just completed the Catherine ritual. As he speaks, the lights fizz, flash, and rapidly flick on and off. The cameraman pans his lens over to what appears to be a child's bedroom. As this happens, suddenly a muffled scream can be heard emanating from the wardrobe behind the bed. The man, cursing as he goes, flings the door of the closet open. The flashing lights pick out an open toy chest, overflowing with dolls, beanie babies, and teddy bears. 
our hero sweeps aside the first few to reveal a Furby toy. Its beak mouth is open as wide as it can go, though the grinding gears audible between shrieks suggest that whatever force has possessed it was unsatisfied with such limitations. As the piercing screams burst forth from the speakers, its bright LED eyes flash red, white, red, white over and over again. The man snatches the toy from the chest, hurls it at the wall, and then shatters it with a child's hockey stick. The ending in the video features a slightly more light-hearted moment, as the man turns his camera on a bawling girl of 10 or 11 and yells something to the effect of, This is why we don't play with that shit. At this point, its reach had peaked. With a few Reddit and 4chan threads deciding to solve the mystery behind Catherine and her disturbing presence on the net, a Who Is search revealed that the Catherine Is Crying website had first been registered back in 2003 by somebody located in the United Kingdom, calling themselves Edward Kidder. However, 4chan's X board and Reddit quickly discovered that the only E Kidder on recent records in the UK had died in 2001. Additionally, Wayback Machine searches turned up no caches, backups, or snaps of the website, meaning that there existed no record of what might once have been on that site. Even the broken image files became a dead end, as no matter what format they were converted into, they were apparently inaccessible by any image viewing software available to the US. The only link between the deceased Edward Kidder and the website was a census search. Now this revealed at the time of his death, Kidder, an unemployed programmer and Cambridge graduate, had been sharing a house with his wife, Catherine Kidder, and their infant daughter. Further census records were later added, revealing that all three members of the Kidder family had died on the same date, in 2001. No other details were forthcoming, and the X-thread was eventually derailed by wild and unsubstantiated rumors that Kidder had killed his entire family with a hatchet or that he'd trapped them in a closet and set fire to their home. X often prides itself on the ability to get shit done by hysteria, though a good tool for productivity under pressure tends to warp the truth, the closer you try to hug it. By the end of it all, I wasn't sure whether it was true anymore, and left feeling more downcast than I had been at the start of the thread. Come mid-2015 and the Catherine is Crying game was almost forgotten. It had been almost entirely supplemented by the so-called Charlie Challenge, a kind of Ouija board pencil trick, which was far easier to perform and far more film-friendly than flitting between computer screen and camera phone. As I understand it, the final chapter in this strange digital phenomena came in the form of a tragic act of bloodshed. Like the bubbling over of a long, simmering pot, it was this final act of bloodshed which led to the takedown of the Catherine is Crying page by the authorities. Last year, a group of high schoolers from Avon, New York, were spending their summer break in a hunting cabin that belonged to one of the girl's fathers. Bored, one rainy evening someone apparently suggested they played a creepy old game, and using a tablet with 4G connected to the Catherine is Crying website. According to the victims, there was no flickering of lights or receipt of ghost messages. Everything seemed quite normal until they realized that one of their numbers, a 16-year-old girl named Charlotte Devon, was missing. The little girl wandered around the cabin and its grounds calling Charlotte's name. Eventually, they came to a wood shed, its door ajar. A shrill whimpering from within confirmed their suspicions that the little ghost story had frightened her. In a moment of adolescent mischief, one of the boys scratched at the handle, and adopting the most sinister voice he could muster, he hissed, Kitty cat, come out and play. At this, the door of the woodshed burst open, and Charlotte Devon emerged, her face frozen in an awful, even unnatural mask of terror. Jaw dropped open as far as it would go, and eyes rolled back into her head. In her hands was a rusted chopping axe. 
which had lain atop a log pile. She had almost decapitated one girl and left another in a coma by the time her boyfriend, Dylan Clear, managed to wrestle the weapon from her grasp. She twisted and thrashed, drooling uncontrollably from her awful, gaping mouth until deputies from the Somerset County Sheriff's Department arrived. As they approached, guns drawn, Charlotte jolted back to reality, as though awakening from an awful dream. Then she sagged in the arms of Dylan and began to cry. Hey there, kids. It's me, Mr. Creepypasta. Just wanted to say thanks so much for listening. You guys are what makes this channel worthwhile. There'll be new horror stories every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday night, as well as gaming live streams every Friday and Sunday night. Please help support on patreon.com slash Mr. Creepypasta, and you can hear me as well as many other Creepypasta narrators live 24-7 at scrmradio.com. Sweet dreams.